Hey everybody, my name is Asia and welcome back to my channel. Today I am filming a short book slash novella book recommendations video to help you reach your reading goal for the year. I don't know about y'all, but I do love a short book. I love a novella. So that is one reason that I wanted to make this video. But also, as we are approaching the end of the year, a lot of times we are all scrambling to find short books or trying to f just cram in a lot of books to reach our reading goal, whether it's our Goodreads reading goal or we've already surpassed that Goodreads reading goal and we're trying to read the most we've ever read in a year. But regardless, a lot of people are looking for short books and novellas towards the end of the year. And honestly, I just really love novellas. So I wanted to make this video. And so all these books are going to be under 200 pages, which is what I consider a novella. And I believe that I'm also going to do a second part just because I actually did continue going on with the list with books that were between 200 and 300 pages or books that I felt were fast paced. But that was a lot of books for one video. It's already a lot in this video. So I think I'm going to split those videos up and do novellas in this one and then fast paced books in the other one. And I'm going to have timestamps down below so you can hop around genre to genre. Basically, I have romance, horror and then I have one book that doesn't fit into either of those categories and then graphic novels. I find that really horror and romance are the only two genres that have a lot of novellas in them and they are genres that focus a lot on short forms of that genre. And I'm also not going to talk really in depth about each of these just because they are so short so I feel like talking a lot about them and talking a lot about what they're about may actually reveal and spoil some of the contents within the book so I feel like a lot of times novellas are best going into with just a couple buzzwords or like a sentence or two known about them and these are actually going to go in ascending order in each genre so first genre is going to be horror and we're going to start with the book with the least number of pages going to the most number of pages so coming in at just 30 pages i have a for he can creep which is a really weird book it's classified as horror but i would honestly not put it in here i don't know what genre i would put it in but horror i guess is the most accurate one it just wasn't really horrifying to me but in this book we follow this man who is in something similar to a psych ward and he has a pet cat with him who is actually a big part of the story as well and he basically made this deal with the devil and in return for what he asked for the devil so that he would come collect on this debt that he basically owed him and this debt is that this man was supposed to write a poem that would bring about the apocalypse and that's all you really need to know this is actually based on a poem that was originally written i don't remember by who but it is based on an actual poem but this one is super short it's basically the shortest one on this entire list but it is really fun and interesting it's just very weird it's almost giving like tim burton type energy which i find super interesting and then coming in at 64 pages we have the grown up by gillian flynn which is one that a lot of people talk about it is not one of my personal favorites but i know a lot of people adore and love this one so i definitely had to mention it in this we basically follow like a tarot reader slash psychic and she does that but on the side she also kind of participates in some promiscuous behavior with men that they pay her for and so one day a woman comes to her with a issue and she has to try and help this woman solve her issue and when i read this i forgot that it was horror and so it went really in a completely different direction than i anticipated because it doesn't really get into the horror until later on in the story and the way that it started and from that point the direction that it went in was just so phenomenal and gillian flynn has amazing writing you can see that in gone girl to gone girl it wasn't my personal favorite again but a lot of people think it's a classic a lot of people love it and she kind of creates some foundations within the genres that she writes in and next up i have anything written by eric larocco and right now he has out four novellas three of which i've read ranging from 106 pages to 236 pages um i actually just have this one here which i'm currently in the middle of and this one's actually their shortest which comes in at 98 pages so this one is the shortest one but i have not fully read this one so i'm not going to recommend this one yet but i have read their other three works which is things have gotten worse since we last spoke which i have have the new bind up edition the original one is pretty short but they did come out with this edition which has that original novella in it as well as like i believe three other short stories i have not read the full bind up yet um but i do plan to because i love the novella so much and then they've also written you've lost a lot of blood and we can never leave this place um my favorite of the three is things have gotten worse since we last spoke by far um i love all of their work i've given i think you've lost a lot of blood four stars and then the other two i've given 4.5 or five stars and then this one i believe is going to be a five star 
but things have gotten worse since we last spoke is where it all started and where my love really founded i think that this one is so perfect it is i believe around 130 140 pages it's pretty short and so we follow this one woman as she is going on the quest of trying to sell this apple peeler that has been in her family it's vintage and she's just in need of some cash so she's trying to sell it on like ebay and she begins messaging with someone who would like to purchase it from her and things get weird from there and it is just so weird and gross i don't understand why it has a 3.06 on goodreads that's so low but it's just so phenomenal and um we can never leave this place is my second favorite which is weird it has to do with grief and motherhood out of all of his that i've read it's kind of like the one that messes with your mind the most and everything that you think is real kind of gets flipped on its head and then you lost a lot of blood is also really good it just has more of like a vr slash like video game element in it which is not my favorite but i still highly recommend it and i know some people that's their absolute favorite one of his they were here before it's a little bit different than the other three just because this one is totally Told more in like vignettes like the first story is around like 11 12 pages and there's just some like short stories and they basically have to do with what it says on the back um it says the only thing more brutal than nature is love and, and so, so it has to, to oh god and so basically it really just has to do with that it's love related metaphors told throughout nature and using nature as a medium to show the horror of love i will say you've lost a lot of blood is his longer work which comes in over the page limit at 236 but since i was talking about eric laraca as a whole i still wanted to mention it here the next is the murders of molly southward coming in 122 pages and this one's really interesting we follow this girl molly and ever since molly could remember every single time that she bleeds basically a clone of her is created and these clones are basically out to kill her some of them are more gentle than others and they are getting more vicious as she gets older and we follow her from from basically I would say like a little bit before puberty like when she's a later child all the way up into like her right out of college like mid-20s and you follow throughout her life and how her family also deals with this her mother and father definitely kind of trained her on a lot of things because it's literally every single time that she bleeds even when she has her period everything and it's not just like in a video game where when you kill another person they just disappear or whatever literally they leave behind bodies and so they have to deal with the cleanup of that and how to prevent her bleeding and how to if she is bleeding how to like patch it up because the more that she bleeds the more that clones will continue to replicate and come and they've also talked her how to fight for herself if a clone is trying to kill her and it's super interesting this one is more like sci-fi horror but i definitely recommend it it is really just interesting i just love the premise so much i know this one is a series and i think three of them are out i don't know if that's all of them but, I, but i'm pretty sure three of them are out and i would assume the other two are probably in a similar page range to this first one one of my favorites in the horror category is to be devoured which is coming in at 133 pages this one is just so phenomenal and the writing is just so masterful in the way that it it transports you into this woman's mind and so basically we follow this woman and she is kind of drawn to vultures and how they eat meat and how they scavenge and her mental health is basically deteriorating throughout this whole story and you see that and you start to feel that in the beginning I felt completely normal and then as I started to go throughout the story getting about halfway through I felt like I didn't know what was going on my brain was fuzzy I was like it, it literally felt like I didn't know what was real what wasn't real and that was very similar to what was going on with the actual character herself and I found that super just fascinating and amazing and this one is honestly one of my favorites it is super graphic and some of the stuff in here is a little gross um but it is super phenomenal if you could handle the triggers and obviously look up the triggers for any of these because they all probably have triggers coming in at 136 pages is the night of the mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones and and so this follows a group of teenagers who decide to prank their friend who works at the movie theater by taking this mannequin and decide to leave it in the movie theater when everybody else walks out and leaves the mannequin's still sitting there and so the friend will have to like be like oh like get out or whatever um but the mannequin ends up walking away out the theater with everybody else when the movie ends and so they're like okay how did the mannequin just come to life and then deal with that this one is honestly probably like the most like traditional slasher i have on this one this one has a lot of kills in it compared to some of the other horrors that i have on here that are more like um meaningful and this one still is meaningful but this one if you're trying to scratch that like 
uh, slasher itch I would definitely recommend this one and I know he has another one that I haven't read called the last final girl I don't know how many pages that one is but the audiobook is like an hour long um, so on three times speed that's like 20 minutes or two times speed that's like half an hour and it is told like it's a script and so that one's also really short if you're looking for something else by this author if you've already read uh, the night of the mannequins because this one is a little bit more popular while the last final girl is a little bit more underrated next i have for the sake of by judith sonnet which comes in at 141 pages this one is the only like extreme horror i have on this whole list and extreme horror is a subcategory of horror that is extreme it's meant to disturb you it's meant to shock you it's meant to gross you out and this one i did that i read some other extreme horror that's not on this list but i have read some other ones and they definitely disgusted me grossed me out whatever but this one actually physically made me gag and i was in public i literally went mm -hmm like on the bus it was horrible um but that was like the whole point of this book and I love that it was able to get that reaction from me this one is nasty and disgusting and I got this recommendation from Haley and McKay and I love the way that Haley describes this book she describes it kind of as like um if you want something like Squid Games but more extreme more graphic more intense read this book pick it up and I love that description it doesn't necessarily give like Squid Games vibes it's not like um people competing against each other but it is like a competition of how far you'll go and putting you through extreme tasks that question your own morality and I love that so basically we follow this um, competition that is broadcasted onto the internet for like some sick freaks who like this type of stuff and so in this competition they take a person and put them through all these tasks to try and save one of their loved ones but we do follow one main plot line throughout this first one of a woman whose daughter got kidnapped months prior and now she is going through these trials to try and save her child and these trials are horrible they are horrendous they are some of the worst things that you can imagine happening to you this book is so graphic and depraved and i've heard the second book even ups it even more this book is so good if you're looking for something that's going to make you gag make you hurl but also make you sad coming in at 149 pages is the ballad of black tom and so this one i believe takes place around the 20s in new york city and there is this man who kind of um like uh, not sells oddities but like delivers them and he delivers a suitcase and it leads to him kind of encountering some Lovecraftian horrors this is based on Lovecraft and this one is about a black man in the 20s so it does have some commentary on race and so I really enjoyed that throughout this as well. the time period is really what made it for me and I really truly like that about this novella so if you're looking for something that's going to kind of be like a little bit more historical and give you like those 20s vibes and also if you like Lovecraft I've never read Lovecraft or anything Lovecrafty and I don't even know what that means truly I just know that's what this book is about um but if you really enjoy that you would probably like this one coming in at 176 pages is what moves the dead by t king fisher i actually gave this one two stars it's definitely not my favorite but a lot of people adore and love this one so i wanted to mention it this one is a retelling of the fall of the house of usher which i do really really love but a lot of people who do love that story love this one as well i just didn't but we follow this trans soldier that is going to the house of usher and i'm not going to say more than that um but it does take a play on that and if you like mexican gothic you'll probably like this one because of some elements and the atmosphere um, so if you like Mexican Gothic and you like The Fall of the House of Usher, you'll probably enjoy this one. I didn't like Mexican Gothic, which is why I probably don't like this one. I really appreciated the representation and the writing. I just didn't really like like the twist or the horror elements and how it took the story. Coming in at 182 pages is one of my absolute favorites, and that is Gone to See the River Man. And this one is so phenomenal. This one is another extreme horror. I forgot this one's on the list, but this one, it's extreme in a very different way than For the Sake of. The For the Sake of is very gory and graphic, and this one does have that. And this this is like one of the one books that made me feel like I really was having a fever dream. Some books I just don't know what's going on and then I'm confused but this one it felt like I've never been on mushrooms or acid or anything like that but it was like I was taking a hallucinogen a hallucinogen a hallucinogen okay there we go I, as I said I've never taken one but that's what I would imagine this book to be we follow this woman who basically started up a romantic relationship with a serial killer who's in prison so she like started writing letters to him and then now she like goes to visit him and stuff like that and he ends up giving her this task to go get this key from the cabin that he used to live in and give it to this mysterious person called the river man this takes place i believe in like louisiana like swampy like deep south bayou and that really adds to the atmosphere and this goes in a completely different direction than you would anticipate the horror is so different 
then what it leads you thinking serial killer slaughters 20 women like graphic and it's completely different and the main character also brings along on this quest her um, disabled sister which added a very interesting element which has to do a lot with the story actually it has a lot to do with like family relationships and um sisters but um, a lot of other things as well. It's just so weird. You just have to pick it up and try it for yourself. It's just so, so freaking good, okay? It's one of my favorite horrors ever. And the last horror that I have to mention coming in at 184 pages is Ring Shout. It is kind of set in like this alternate reality slash future where KKK members kind of transform into these actual creatures and there is a group of black people who are fighting them and trying to defeat them and there's like a big battle coming up related to these kkk members and these kkk members uh creatures started basically with the birth of a nation when that movie came out in 1950 and i just really like how it discussed everything related to race this is not really like my favorite type of horror i don't really like race related horror thrillers like it's obviously super scary and terrifying but for me it's just traumatic this one is not my favorite but i think it's super it goes into the history of the birth of a nation and how impactful that movie was in history because it truly was not just in this book it just truly was impactful in history in a very negative way and i just really like that discussion and how it manifests something so horrific into something that a lot of people can see as horrifying because a lot of people don't think race related horror or thrillers are scary because it's not scary to them because they never have to deal with it um they don't have to deal with racism but this one was able to take that feeling and that concept and put it into a physical form so people who don't identify as black or other racial minority are able to feel what it feels like in a way obviously it's not the same but they're able to understand better so if you're looking for something to kind of do that for you i would definitely recommend this one next up we're moving on to romance and the first one that i have coming in at 55 pages is ho 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 by rosie adams and this one is just a short smutty novella if that's what you're looking for for this holiday season and in this one we follow a woman who married her college sweetheart and did not have sex at all before that and she ends up catching chlamydia from him because he cheated on her and she has this love interest that she kind of gained but she never really did anything with they find each other again years later and she ends up telling him about all of her um all of her experiences that she's had so far since they last saw each other and this one is just super short and smutty it wasn't my favorite because i wanted more interaction between like our main couple and it was more about her um, experiences and encounters that she's had. But it is still really short and sweet and good for this holiday season. Then I have Feed coming in at 62 pages. And this one is actually a monster romance, which is the only one that I've read. Probably the only one I plan on reading in the near future. But it is actually really, really good. I did not expect to like this one at all. And in this one, follow a succubus. And she, you know, feeds off people's energy. And so in this world, there's kind of like this... Um, it's not a dating app a mixture between like a dating app but also like something where you can like post yourself for jobs they often post listings on this app where they will ask someone hey like can i willingly feed off your energy it's like pretty anonymous and everything but it can also be for like other things because there's a whole bunch of different monsters in this world so it could be for other things that other monsters need sexual things it could be for a lot of different things um and someone ends up accepting her request um, and he shows up and it actually ends up being uh, one of her co-workers that she hates so it's kind of like enemies to lovers and he's like an insect of some sort I can't remember which one but I just remember there was like one part about him being like fuzzy or his antennas or something and I don't like that but the whole rest of it I really really enjoyed and this one I really just like the enemies to lover banter and energy it was super duper good and the fact that she was a succubus I was like kind of eating that part up I'm not even gonna lie then we're going to the them boy series by alexandria house which ranges from 83 pages to 113 pages there's three books in this trilogy where we follow these three brothers they're called the them boys i don't remember their names but these brothers are all like older they're in their like 40s that's not old that's not what i'm saying most heroines and heroes in romance novels tend to be uh younger like in their 20s so these ones are a little bit older you know middle age 40s maybe even a i think one of them might be in their 50s and we follow their romances and they're super short as i said 83 to 113 pages and these are black love romances which i eat up every single time i really did enjoy the series because of the black love it was just giving everything i needed to give two of the three are between um people of their own age i believe even one of the heroines is a grandma but then i think there is one that is age gap you know black authors in romance they just have a little essence a little flair a little flavor to them 
and this series has that flair and flavor okay it's gonna eat every single time then next up i have the mindfuck series which is five books long and these range from 116 pages to 176 pages and in this series we follow our main character lana and she is a serial killer who is killing these men that wronged her and over the course of the series you kind of figure out what they actually did to her but she starts dating this man who is in the fbi and he's actually in the unit that is trying to track her down they don't know that it's her obviously um but they're trying to track down the serial killer that ends up being her they're super good i've read three of the five so far i know a lot of people say that they just keep getting better and the fifth one is the best they just improve some people say that like the third book's the best and then it gets boring from there i've really enjoyed the three that i've read so far the second one was my least favorite because it's literally called sidetracked and they do sidetrack from the main plot i really enjoy the chemistry between all the characters and just like the tension of dating the man that is trying to track you down plus this one is kind of like a good for her type uh book which i really love and this one is obviously more like a romance thriller next up i have go deep by rosie adams again which comes in at 131 pages and this one is a friends to lovers romance and i don't even like friends to lovers but this one is so so good this is one of my favorites on this list and our heroine is a writer and she's trying to look for inspiration she writes like erotica novels and she doesn't really have inspiration she's not really feeling inspired to write so her friend decides to help her out and give her some inspiration you know and it's just super super good and rosie adams again the black authors are just going to have that flavor and spice when they write romance black romance is it just has something to it that no other romance has and it's so good then at 133 pages i have the dare by harley larue and this one is like enemies to lovers it follows uh two characters who knew each other in high school one of them the hero is kind of like nerdy everybody made fun of him he's not really nerdy he's more of like edgy goth like outsider our heroine is like a more of like a popular girl and she used to make fun of him everybody did and so they end up playing um what's it called beer pong that's what they're called beer pong and the beer pong has some dares so they can either like some of them have the dares and if they do then they can either do the dare or drink what's in the cup um but if they do the dare then it saves the cup you know thus allowing them to have a higher probability of winning and so throughout this game dares are done dares are had but there is a dare at the end that kind of puts the hero in control of the heroine and she basically has to be at his will and serve him which leads to a lot of interesting dynamics and interesting things this book was taken off amazon it's the only place you can get it, i think is eden books or from the author's website but it's truly like not that bad like i've definitely read worse stuff off amazon than this it's just not vanilla but it, it's not crazy like the bullying in this is not crazy there is a little bit of bullying but it's not anything more than like a normal bully romance look up the triggers whatever they are in the beginning of this book i believe as well on the front page then i have two novellas by katie roberts i have your dad will do at 150 pages and I have Gifting Me to His Best Friend at 138 pages and this is the first and the second book in the Touch of Taboo novella series by Katie Robert and the first one obviously is a uh, age gap romance. Our main character gets cheated on by her boyfriend and so she decides to sleep with his dad. In Gifting Me to His Best Friend we end up following this married couple who goes to a cabin for the holidays and they bring the husband's best friend. He ends up gifting his wife to his best friend and there is like some moments between all three of them which is really really fun um so this series is really smutty really fun and it so it's definitely a good place to start but it is super smutty then at 175 pages i have haunted by christina c jones this one is a little bit better for more around like the halloween time because it is haunted it does have to do with like ghosts in a way but kind of not so we follow this main character and she's in a relationship but the relationship's a little bit lackluster and so she ends up having dreams and hallucinating this man and so she thinks that she's being like haunted by a ghost or something but he ends up showing up and becomes kind of like a business partner with her boyfriend um and he remembers the dreams he was there too but nobody else was able to see him it's not really the paranormal in that way but it does go in more like a fantastical direction the last romance novella that i have is 197 pages and that is satan's affair and this one is actually the prequel novella to uh haunting adeline which is not my favorite but i do really like this novella because it is mentioned in haunting adeline but it follows um different characters for the most part we follow this girl who has this haunted house and she kills people she kills bad people in this haunted house and she has a group of henchmen 
who help kill these people with her and they kind of have like a little polyamorous situation but everything is not what it seems it is very interesting and i definitely did really enjoy this one it's bloody it's really really good for the halloween season and this one's not really romance it's more of like horror erotica um but if you're looking for something like that and you like those type of books um then i would definitely recommend this one and the one book that doesn't fit into either of these genres is the deep by river solomon this one i guess could kind of be horrific um but i would call it more literary fiction it is a 166 pages in this novella we follow mermaids and these are the descendants of uh, african slaves that were taken obviously from africa on the boats and they end up being thrown overboard for one reason or another probably because they were sick and they end up developing into these mermaids and we do follow one central main character and they are basically in charge of holding all of the trauma and memories of the entire group in them um so everybody else doesn't have to deal with that pain and they are the one who really holds on to it so we know a lot about the trauma and the pain which is very potent and uh heartbreaking then i have a couple graphic novels as i said that i'm going to run through pretty quickly so the first one that i have is inheritance by elizabeth acevedo which comes in at 48 pages and this one is actually a visual poem and i really really enjoyed it it's super duper quick i actually read it in target um while i was just shopping one day and this is basically just talking about hair black women's hair and how important it is to them but also like inheritance and like how important the bond between a black um, mother and her children is and I just love it it was so beautiful I love the art stunning then at 71 pages I have the tea dragon society and this one is just a cute queer graphic novel and it has to do with dragons and tea it's super super cute and I highly recommend then at 192 pages I have wash day diaries and this one I also really love because it has to do with black women's hair we follow a group of four friends and their life struggles and the things that they go through as black women but we also follow the ways that they do their hair and how they're different but also the same but also just black female friendship and how important that is it's super amazing and beautiful highly highly recommend so i hope you guys enjoyed this recommendations video i know it's a little bit long but i had a lot of novellas that i wanted to talk about because i just love novellas so much um, but that's all that i have for this video today let me know if you have any novella recommendations for me down below specifically romance or horror those are my two faves um so if you have any of those recommendations for me i would greatly appreciate them if you made it to the end of this video put the little champagne popping emoji down below to celebrate the end of the year approaching but as i said that's all that i have for this video today and i'll see you all in my next one bye everybody Bye.